Good evening, everyone. Probably the most uh, quoted pasuk in this week's parsha is from the Bracha. that Bilam bestowed upon the Jewish people. I mean, we could say it uh, generally, you know, how beautiful it is, the tents of Jacob, how wonderful it is, how safe it is to live in a Jewish neighborhood, etc., etc. But Rashi chooses to uh, identify this uh, with a halacha. And the halacha is, Shalokivnu pischeyem shalohaleyem zekenegadzeh that they set up their tents, their dwellings in such a way that they couldn't look in on their neighbor. From here, the Gemara derives that uh, there is an intrinsic right of privacy that every person has. And that uh, that right of privacy is uh, basic to uh, the rights of a human being, the rights of a person. So what's doing in my house is none of your business. Then you have no right to look in. And therefore, in order to prevent the temptation that people have that they're curious about others, so therefore they set up their tents in such a way that one could not physically look into the tent of one's neighbor. Now, the Gemara expands this. Okay, so there's a right to privacy. There are a lot of rights. And not all of them are enforceable and not all of them can be translated into damages. But this one, the Gemara stretches, we've le learned in the Gemara in Baba Basra, the beginning of Baba Basra, there, there's a concept called Hezek Rio. Looking at someone else's property, so looking at someone else with a bad look, that's Ayan Ara, which the Torah also prevents. But looking at someone else's property is also an invasion of privacy. And that simply by looking at it, you damage the person. You cause the person a damage. And that's called Hezek Ria. So the Gemara discusses all sorts of cases. Now, in our world, when we are city dwellers, we live in apartments. So uh, many times it's unavoidable that the windows face each other because that's the way the building was built. But if a person comes, let's say, to refurbish one's apartment, and wants to change the windows, he should change them so that they don't face each other. Because of this concept of Hezekiah. 
Uh, what is the, the Rishonim discuss? What's the problem with Ezekri? I mean, why by looking at something do I damage it? Well, in modern day physics, uh, I've discussed with you that looking at something changes it. However, we understand that, but that's been proven in the theory of uncertainty. But in halacha, looking at something damages it simply because of the fact that there always is a certain degree of malevolence that follows anyone's curiosity. And if I look in somebody else's field, so either I say, oh boy, look how great the crop is for this person. Or I say, look how poorly he kept his field is. I have some reaction. I'm never neutral. And that translates itself into Hezegria, into damages that are incurred simply by someone looking at it. Now, in our time as well, the right to privacy is almost non-existent, especially with the advent of uh, what is lovingly called social media. And if uh, you are somehow unwise enough to expose yourself on social media, uh, then your life is uh, open to everyone to say whatever they want to say, to invent whatever they want to invent, to create whatever situation they wish to create. So there are Shilas and Halacha, for instance, what about political leaders? Are they entitled to any right of privacy? Well, in our world, the answer is certainly no. Not only are they not entitled to a right of privacy, we want to know what the person did when he or she was three years old. But the uh, Chuvis discuss whether or not that is permissible. You violated the person's right to privacy. Or do we say that simply by entering the political arena, the person agrees that he has no right to privacy. He's mochil it in advance. Because uh, if you want to write the privacy, you don't want for the Knesset. Don't become a political person. That is the discussion. Now, in the previous generations, let us say, in the Middle Ages, even at the beginning of the modern era, that was not so much... Uh, a current and relevant topic because of the fact that uh, communication was not what it is today. And uh, not only that, there was a time when, I'll give you the, the greatest example I have of this is uh, how the media has changed within my lifetime. When I was a child, so Franklin Delano Roosevelt was president of the United States. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a cripple. He had suffered from polio. He was paralyzed from the weights down. He could not walk without having steel braces and people holding on to him. That fact was never reported in the American media. Today, 
you know, if, if he blows his nose, he's on the front page. So the norm has changed, completely changed. So I'm, I don't know whether or not uh, the president of the United States is uh, demented or not. It's hard to tell. But in a different age, no one would mention that. No one would say that. Uh, Woodrow Wilson was paralyzed with a stroke. No one mentioned that. So for a year and a half, his wife ran the country. Today, all of that is out the window. So the Mephorshim discuss whether or not the change in society changes this right of privacy as well. Because in today's world, when we know that everything is transparent and open and dug up and there, there are no secrets, etc., etc. So if you want to go into uh, the political arena or the public arena, so then you accept the risk. So in the common law, acceptance of the risk is always a defense. If you go to a baseball game and the ball is hit in the stands and will unfortunately hit someone, that person has no claim because by going to the game, that person accepted the risk. So by entering the political or public arena, that person accepts the risk. The Mephorshim do discuss and chuvas. What about a love? If you're a candidate for the Rabonis, do you accept the risk? That about the, does the search committee have the right to go to your third grade teacher? Do they have the right to ask uh, all sorts of questions? Can they go to your previous position? And there's no clear unanimity amongst the uh, postkin. So naturally, most of the postkin were Rabbonim. So they said, you don't have a right to do so. You have a right to ask the person. And if the person chooses to answer, he answers. Otherwise, he doesn't have to answer. You can take that into consideration that he didn't answer. But you have no right to, yeah, to hire a private detective to find out. But uh, lately, uh, there's a different trend in the Chuvis, especially here in Israel. Because there have been, unfortunately, quite a number of public cases that have not brought uh, respect or honor to the rabbinate. So therefore, it's so to speak, again, an acceptance of the risk. You want to be a love, so then you accept it that they're going to look everything that you ever did in your life over again. And uh, you don't have that right to privacy. So we see how uh, from you know, the simple uh, words of the Pasuk of Matovo Alecho Yaakov Mishkan Osecho Yisrael, which uh, is pretty bland. Uh, there arise all sorts of cases, cases between neighbors, cases between employers and employees, cases in the political arena and the public arena and the rabbinic arena. That's a pretty good example, I think, of how Torah evolves and comes to cover a lot of subjects and is not restricted only to the general idea, but rather the devil is always in the details. Rabbi Hanan Yibn Akash, Yomer, Ratzakarish, Morchul, Ratzakos, Es Yisrael, Afichach, Yibalahem, Torah, Mitzvah, Shenem, Arunai, Chavet, Zaman, Zitko, Yagdil, Torah, Yadir.